Hi. Mm-hmm. And welcome back to another episode of The Ginchiest. Dan and I mentioned in another episode that we wanted to start a series called What's Wrong With You? And it's a question that we often got asked when we were growing up and wasn't a great one, obviously, but we're doing it tongue-in-cheek to explain the different diseases that are out there that people might have that cause their disability. Today's um, disease that we're going to cover is spinal muscular atrophy. And the shortened name for that is SMA. But before we go into the specifics, let's back up for a moment and recognize that all of us are made up of trillions of little cells, individual cells. And within each cell is a nucleus. And within the nucleus, there are chromosomes. What it makes up the chromosomes are strands of DNA. What is part of DNA are genes. And this disease has to do with a gene mutation. So essentially, I'm I'm a mutant in some ways because I was born without a gene called SMN1 gene. SMN means or stands for survival motor neuron. It's a really important gene that someone like Dan has and probably someone like you. But if you weren't born with it, there is actually some really exciting treatments, but we'll get to that later. Essentially what this gene does, it makes a protein, an SMN protein, that allows for the muscles in your body to communicate with your nervous system and have it function properly. And there are three types of SMA. There is type one, which is the most severe. There is type two, and then there is type 3. And this is what's really neat about the human body because, okay, so we don't have this gene. People with SMA don't have this gene. However, the human body and all of its mystery um, also has a backup gene. And that one's called, if you're thinking along the lines of the naming thus far, it's SMN2. The problem with the backup though, the backup gene, is that it doesn't function quite the way that the SMN1 gene does. It produces some protein, but it's not in the same capacity or way. I think the main way in which, and I'm not a doctor obviously, that they determine the different types is by the copies. We're born, all of us even have the copies too. So Dan has some SMN2 gene copies. I have some SMN2 gene copies. Apparently, we're born with a certain number of them. So I have three copies, but I think that some people can have as many as five. I don't know if there are more, so correct me in the comments below if you'd like. But the idea is the more copies you have of this backup gene, SMN2 gene, uh, the less of the symptoms you likely experience as a person with SMA. So I have three copies and that would put me right in the middle, which is SMA type two. A person, um, typically they're young, young children, babies who have um, type one, it's considered the most severe and they have the fewest copies of that backup gene. And then type three is later onset. These people typically are able to do a lot more. Some are able to walk, do a lot of their self-care. Let's let's just pause for a moment. We, we talked about the three types and SMA is a genetic disease. If you are watching and you are a parent of a child with SMA, if you are watching and you are a person who, who has SMA, I want us to pause for a moment Because in all seriousness, Dan's being jokey joke, there has been no better time in the history of 
humans to be born with this disease than today because there are real treatments. And I'm not saying all treatments will work for you or your child, but there's actual hope. That's huge. That's miraculous. So it's really, really exciting to even be able to talk about this with you. And, and I hope that, that that's sunk in a little bit. And it also has to do with a number of factors, where you are, whether you, know, you have access to these treatments. Of course, those are big factors. But to, to continue, what are some of the common characteristics of, of SMA or symptoms? So it's marked by general weakness. When the motor neurons are not properly communicating with the nervous system, your muscles are perfectly fine physiologically when you're born. It's just that when there isn't that uh, protein being delivered to your muscles, they atrophy. And atrophy literally means wasting away. So they weaken and they shrink and they don't look like that. Unfortunately. And so people with SMA tend to be very thin. I've been asked if I have an eating disorder multiple times. Like, why would you ask people that? But whatever. The diaphragm muscle doesn't tend to be affected as much. However, the intercoast, I'm getting a little bit too much into anatomy, but the intercoastal muscles in their respiratory system, they tend to develop contractures as do other joints of the body. So that means that, you know, Dan, try to lift my arm for a second. Please. So like, I can't lift up my arm over my head. Dan does that. Dan, pull my arm higher. Okay. So like, I can't have my arm fully extend because it's contracted. The elbow muscles contracted. I'm not a doctor, but I've spoken to my pulmonologist many times and he tried to explain this to me. So I'm doing my best. A lot of times people with SMA have respiratory complications. Not good with the COVID-19 times, just saying. However, um, the lungs themselves are fine. It's just that the muscles surrounding the lungs aren't fine. They are weakened. So we are prone to developing respiratory infections, pneumonias, and uh, it, can, it can get quite serious. So another one is scoliosis. So when your muscles that hold up your spine aren't functioning fully and are not at their full um, strength, you can develop your spine and have it curved. We're gonna develop scoliosis where it develops like an S shape. I had scoliosis and I had to get a spinal fusion and back surgery that put in rods in my back. Neat thing, if you think this is neat, we develop uh, particularly type twos. I don't know about type threes. We'll have to ask Doug this. Fasciculations of the tongue. So if you look very carefully at my tongue, it's like a lightning bolt on, on the surface of my tongue. It's not smooth and cute like Dan's. Dan looks sad. Um, and, and it isn't smooth. And I swear, I brush my tongue. You see my oral hygiene. Like, I'm good at this, but for whatever reason, the physicalations are rapid movements and they can sometimes affect speech too. The idea is that there, there's always that movement going on in my tongue. It doesn't bother me, but that's a common symptom of people with SMA. Now, going to the treatments, because I wrote them down. There are three current treatments on the market. The first one is a gene therapy, actually giving people back the very gene that, that we are missing. So it's that SMN1 gene. And this medication is called, the market name is Zolgensma. The chemical name, I'm gonna try this, Onazemnogene Aparvovic Exoe. I don't know. The pharmaceutical company of Exos provides that one. Then there's Spinraza, marking in. Spinraza, um, drug name, Nucinersan. And that one's offered through Biogen. I took that for a time. Then I moved on to Esbrizdi. Esbrizdi is the market name, and the drug name is Rizdaplan. Now that's an oral 
medication provided through or offered through Genentech. Um, and Spinraza is injected in the CSF, which is cerebral spinal fluid. We saw another YouTuber who botched that uh, <laughs> acronym up. It's cerebral spinal fluid, people. CSF. The, so the first one, Zolgensma, is an actual gene therapy. It's administered also through the, the CSF, or if the babies are young enough, they can do an IV. Not all SMA people are, are really, really skinny. Some of them actually have some heft to them, you know, but, uh, but I am not one of them. But I'm also not the thinnest. But I will show you, okay? Because I wore a tank top just for this, all right? So, so you're welcome. But thank you, we haven't think this happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Thanks, Dan. Let's go to the next segment and the last segment, I promise, because I'm trying to trying to condense this. So what should we take away from the the information that we've learned thus far about um, SMA? And more importantly, how would a lot of people with SMA would like you to consider when you're interacting with them? So the first one is, please don't comment about someone's weight or lack thereof, you wouldn't go up to a person who's carrying around extra weight and be like, listen, I'm worried about you. I mean, uh -huh. come on, let's uh, let's get up from that chair. Start working out, right? I mean, what, you wanna die early? You were carrying around a death wish? No, you wouldn't do that. And the same with somebody who's uber thin, like somebody who might have Crohn's or SMA. It's part of the disease, people. If I were to like try to overeat, it, it wouldn't really work out too well. It wouldn't go to the areas that would probably seem like I need them. Shoulders, arms. I don't know if you can tell, but my shoulders are extremely bony. So are my legs. Dan, can you have me lift my legs? Yeah. <laughs> um, here, I'll put this up. We're so gonna do a video about how Dan helps me with, uh, <laughs> with exercise. Okay, wait, please don't break my leg. Okay. It's thin, okay, folks? The other thing, Dan, try to hand me something really heavy. Okay, I can pick that up. <laughs> mm, be mindful. Like, I, another thing that people have done is they'll hand me, like in school, the teacher would hand me a book and it just would fall straight to the ground because I couldn't lift it. It was a heavy textbook. You know, I'm, I think I'm quite fortunate in the amount of strength I do have. I think that this weighs probably close to a pound and I have to lift it with my, my left hand, which is my dominant hand. If anyone is dealing with some sort of, um, Weakness. Ask them, you know, do you have it? Do you need me to put this into your lap? Is this too heavy for you? It's kind of hard with this example because this one's not too bad, this radio. Uh, but if people like, we're not no, doing the weight. No, uh, well, no. <laughs> you come the shot, you keep leaving the shot. <laughs> Anywho, that's all we got for today, folks. Keep it Genji. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was educational. Ciao.